The Spiral tool lets you create a wide variety of different spiral configurations. It can be found in the list of shape tools. I'll long click on the triangle tool and then release over the spiral tool. Now I'll click drag to create a spiral. The spiral is created from the center without the need for modifiers. Like with other shapes, it also works with quick grids. So if I keep the mouse button held down, I can tap the arrow keys to create columns and rows of spirals. If I hold down the directional buttons, I can increase or decrease the gaps in between. I can hold shift to lock the rotation to 45 degree increments. Holding command on Mac or control on Windows will reverse the spiral. This can be done in combination with other modifiers. And holding control on Mac or the right mouse button on Windows will allow non-proportional scaling. To create these spirals, I'll hold Shift and reverse them with Command. When I'm happy, I'll release the mouse button to create the shapes. I'll just go to the Stroke panel and increase the stroke weight, and position them in the middle of the document. There are six different styles of spiral that you can create, and you can change the style on the context toolbar. The first spiral is a linear spiral. This means that the gap in between each spiral turn remains consistent. A turn is one full rotation around the center. This spiral is drawn from the outside inwards. The next spiral style is decaying. This means that the gap in between each spiral turn decreases the nearer the curve gets to the center of the spiral. As such, this spiral is also drawn inwards. When the decaying style is selected, the option to change the decay ratio of each turn appears on the context toolbar. In this case, the gap between each turn decreases by 50% each time. The next style, semicircular, looks very similar to the linear style. However, this spiral is formed of semicircular arches that begin in the center and are drawn outwards. For the fourth spiral, we'll create the fourth style, counter semicircular. This is like the semicircular style, but the spiral doubles back on itself. It looks very busy here, so I'll bring the number of turns down to one, so we can get a better look. Here we can see the single full turn of the spiral, and then here we can see the single full turn of the counter spiral. The fifth style on the list is the Fibonacci spiral. This spiral approximates the golden spiral using quarter turn angles derived from the Fibonacci sequence. The last style is the plotted option. This presents the spiral in straight line divisions. And you can set the number of straight lines per turn on the context toolbar to give different results. Let's have a look at an example of how the spiral tool might be used. There are more settings on the context toolbar to alter your spirals depending on which style you choose. Here we have a design that includes lots of spirals. I'll select the linear spiral and experiment with some of the other settings. At the beginning of the context toolbar, we have the color wells to change the fill color and the stroke color. We also have quick access to the stroke properties, where we can set the stroke style and width. We can also change the cap, join and align settings, and the order and arrowhead settings. These spirals have an end arrowhead set to solid circle. Next along the context toolbar is the presets button. This is really useful for saving spiral settings and applying them to other spirals. To save a spiral that you've selected, click the options and select Create Preset. I'll name it Spiral 1 and then click Create. Now I can click on different presets to see how they look in situ. You can right click on the presets to rename or delete them and you can export your presets from here too. Also in the options, you can open the Preset Manager and the presets that you've saved will appear down at the bottom. We've looked at the different styles of spiral already, so we'll look at the three buttons after that. The two to the right determine whether the spiral travels clockwise or anti-clockwise, and the button to the left toggles cusp segments on or off. This means that the spiral is made of straight lines, with a corner at every arc angle. For this spiral, the arc angle is set to 90 degrees. So a corner occurs every 90 degrees around a turn. 
the arc angle can be increased or decreased on the context toolbar. Increasing the angle will create a tighter, more angular spiral, and decreasing it will create a more open spiral. The arc angle option is only available for the linear and decaying styles because the arc angle of the other styles is determined by how they are made up. If you want more rotation in your spiral, you can increase the number of turns, and you can add a percentage of a partial turn to fine-tune the position of the end of the spiral in the center. For the linear and plotted styles, you can change the inner radius. This moves the spiral's start position out from the center. Setting a radius to 100% means that there would be no inward movement at all. However, enabling cusped segments and playing around with the arc angle and number of turns can yield interesting results. The decaying style has a few different options. I'll just disable use cusped segments. As I mentioned earlier, we can change the decay ratio for each turn. The lower the percentage, the more turns are needed to reach the center. If you set a high percentage, the spiral travels a shorter distance to reach the center. You can also decide whether this percentage of decay relates to a whole turn around the spiral or just for each arc. The minimum radius sets the minimum amount that the spiral can decay to at its center and you can choose to cap the inside with a circle or disable this to just stop the spiral at the minimum radius. The spiral tool becomes really powerful when combined with other features. For example, like any other vector curve or shape, we can apply vector brushes. To do this, I'll select the spiral and open the brushes panel. Now I can choose a brush category and click down the list to try out different brushes. I could also open the stroke properties on the context toolbar to increase the line weight. The spiral tool can also be used in conjunction with the symbols feature. I'll look on the layers panel and select the background layer of this design. Then I'll select the spiral tool and click drag to create a spiral. I'll hold shift to lock the rotation and command to reverse it. I'll change the style to a counter semicircular style. Now I'll turn it into a symbol. You could go to the window menu and select the symbols panel, but I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift and K on Mac or Control Shift and K on Windows. Next, I'll drag the spiral layer to clip it inside the background layer to keep everything tidy. Now I'll duplicate this by pressing Command and J on Mac or Control and J on Windows and move it down under the first one. Now I'll press Command and J again to power duplicate a line of spirals down the document. I'll zoom out and press V to switch to the Move tool and click drag to select all of the spirals. Then I'll press Command and J again to duplicate the whole row and position it next to the first one. Now I can power duplicate the row again to cover the background. Because these spirals are symbolized, it's easy to make changes in the future. I can open any of the spiral groups and select the spiral shape, and then make changes on the context toolbar to see how different spirals might fit in the artwork. So that was a look at the spiral tool and some of the options on the context toolbar. Thanks for watching.